Hello everyone and uh, welcome to this uh, discussion which we are going to have on assumptions and applications. This is part 1 of Thais equation. It is in two parts, so we will have another discussion on this. When we are using lot of equations and other things, uh, then the video might be short, uh, but it is for the better understanding or grasping of the subjects. Uh, earlier also very briefly we have touched about uh, what are the things which are assumed in uh, Thais equation and how these are applied. So, we will be having this discussion now. So, we, as we know that uh, uh, you know we are handling um, complicated situations in subsurface conditions. Sometimes we are handling uh, confined aquifer conditions, sometimes we are handling unconfined aquifers. And now all these aquifers might have some aquifer boundaries. So, they make our uh, you know uh, estimations of uh, hydraulic characteristics little difficult. And uh, then because of these we, we achieve this non-steady state or steady state uh, situations also. Uh, so, th therefore, they, uh, there are lot of as we have seen so far there are uh, equations, there are basic equations, modified equations and uh, some methods are there. So, for uh, the challenging part uh, is uh, when we are uh, working in the non-steady conditions or non for non-steady equation. As we know that the thighs is uh, for non-steady equations. So, th uh, this thai, uh, thighs made the few assumptions uh, with respect to the aquifer and about a discharging well when the uh, you know pumping is being done. So, uh, we uh, the Thais equation assumed that aquifer is homogeneous and isotropic, but at the same time we know uh, it is uh, theoretically it might be possible, but uh, practically it is not. So, but this is how it is assumed. Therefore, each equation including your Darcyla or Darcy equation, Thais equation, Thaim equation, Jacob equation all will have limitations. They can only be applied in some limited conditions because every such equations are having some or another assumptions. So, in, in uh, groundwater engineering there is no universal kind of equation is available to us. But anyway whatever the understanding so far have been developed in centuries uh, we will be using and uh, determining our hydraulic characteristics of aquifer. Second uh, assumption which we are having is about the aquifer has finite aerial extent. So, important point it is homogeneous, isotropic and infinite aerial extent. Now, infinite aerial extent again there might be aquifer boundaries. So, but anyway this is the assumption with the Thais equation. Second, a third point here is the coefficient of transmissibility is constant at all time and all places. And again this is a very big assumption with this coefficient of transmissibility is uh, you know uh, assuming that our aquifer is homogeneous and isotropic. That is why this uh, coefficient of transmissibility assumed is constant. Now, another or fourth assumption here is when the water is removed from storage, then the discharge instantaneously with decline head. This is what is assumed. As soon as you withdraw, start withdrawing the water, uh, we assume that the discharge instantaneously with the decline head. And the another assumption which we are having is that well penetrates and received water from the entire thickness of the aquifer. Now, this is another assumption. But if it is unconfined aquifer conditions and pumping has started, you will not have the thickness that water is coming from entire thickness of the aquifer. Also, many times we do not know what is the thickness of the aquifer itself. So, we do not know when the drilling is being done, we do not know how to at what depth the drilling should be done. So, that we cover the entire thickness of aquifer. So, anyway, and uh, these are the assumptions which are with the Thais equation and that makes a uh, you know limited use of this particular equation also. Uh, 
बट नन ऑफ द फर्स्ट फोर एजम्पन्स आर मेट इन नेचर वॉट आर द फर्स्ट फोर एजम्पन्स होमोजीनियस आइसोट्रोपिक इनफाइनाइट एक्सटेंट कोफिशियंट ऑफ ट्रांसमिजिलिटी इज कॉन्स्टेंट एंड वाटर रिमूव फ्रॉम स्टोरेज इज डिस्चार्ज इंस्टेंटली विद डिक्लाइन हेड सो दीज एजम्पन्स आर नेवर एग्जिस्ट इन नेचर नन द लेस द फर्स्ट एजम्पन इज प्रोहली इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट रियरली मेट इन नेचर विच वी हैव ऑल्सो डिस्कस इन आवर प्रीवियस डिस्कसन दैट होमोजीनियस एंड आइसोट्रोपिक डजेंट एग्जिस्ट इन नेचर एंड स्पेशली वेन वी कैन नॉट सी द फॉर्मेशंस एंड देयर फोर एज्यूमिंग दैट्स द लिमिटेशन एनी वे वेयर इज द एजम्सन फाइव बींग मेयरली ए मैटर ऑफ वेल कंस्ट्रक्शन एंड कैन बी मैट दैट मीन्स द एंटायर थिकनेस ऑफ द क्यूफर इज अवेलेबल दैट मीन्स द वेल इज पेनीट्रेटिंग विद द फुल थिकनेस ऑफ द क्यूफर so this is that assumption so almost uh, uh, you know in nature uh, we know that almost every aquifer contains variations in composition and that is cause the permeability to differ from place to place when you know you have to think in that terms when these rocks are being formed the supply of sediments or pressure conditions or temperature conditions are not same and therefore within the same rock type there will be variations in within that rock also so if i am get encountering a sedimentary rock that doesn't mean that in infinite extent the all characteristics of that sedimentary bed will remain same not at all this varies with the space and uh, with the depth also so horizontally it varies and uh, vertically it also varies so that every aquifer contains variations in composition and it cause the permeability to differ from place to place and uh, uh, in that way we cannot consider a constant or a fixed value for permeability in a part, even for a particular bed but uh, nearly as we know that nearly all sedimentary layers or con- uh, sedimentary rocks contains layers of different grain sizes and hence permeability is greatest parallel to the layers and from there basically and we withdraw the water most of the time or main main water input is coming through our pump well is from the horizontal layer you know or horizontal extent but uh, it is generally in the you know in that vertical section the permeability is not as great as there because it will depend also on the thickness of the aquifer so the permeability is the greatest parallel to the layers and at least at the right angles to them that means in the vertical direction so in horizontal extent it is uh, generally good now um, here we are having a, a two on the right figure we are having two horizontal stratified aquifers and between two confining beds so we are having two acute art which you can observe here and aquifer is there this is a confined aquifer situation and uh, there is a pumping well which is shown with the q there are two observation wells a and b so the distance uh, from pumping well of a well observation well is 10 meter another uh, for the second observation well that is b is uh, 25 meter and uh, the thickness of uh, aquifer here this confined aquifer is given as 8 meter so uh, the effect of well construction on aquifer now here another important thing one has to notice as we have been discussing that the well is penetrating throughout the width of the aquifer as you can see over here also so well is going if a well is not going throughout the aquifer then you are going to have a different scenario altogether so the effect of well construction uh, one of the assumptions was there that it is penetrating throughout the thickness of the aquifer will depend on and which will affect our aquifer test pumping well is screened in the lower part of the aquifer that means uh, not throughout as you can also see here that the first part is uh, not having a screen or uh, vents or uh, sl- slits or openings but the lower part of uh, this uh, pumping well is having screens from where water can enter so permeability as we have been and discussing is parallel to the layers that is in horizontal extent so we can call here is horizontal permeability and uh, will be different 
will also be different in different directions. This is another important thing that it is suppose in one particular direction say east west the permeability is very high, but in north south the permeability may not be the same. So, uh, in even in the uh, horizontal directions it may vary uh, place to place because the water uh, just recall the cone of depression it is a inverted cone. So, the water towards the well will be coming from all surroundings. So, that is why it is different in different directions the permeability it within this horizontal and uh, depending on environment during the deposition the geological environment uh, individual layers may vary in thickness also and in their characteristics also. Though in this example we are showing almost the same thickness throughout the uh, cuber uh, width which is shown here in the section but uh, it does not uh, have all the time in natural conditions. Only in a very, uh, very specific situations you may get uh, for a large extent horizontal extent you may get the thickness of an aquifer almost constant, but generally it varies. Another thing is the stratification within a aquifer you would have uh, different variations in the uh, materials or sediments which have been used. If I take example from sedimentary uh, layers or sedimentary formations. So, stratification will influence uh, the response of aquifer uh, during the pumping test and therefore, the considered when analyzing aquifer test data. See the challenge here all the time for us is that we are not seeing things the data which we are getting only uh, one data which you are getting the Q data or discharge data you are getting from pump well, another data you are getting water levels from uh, different wells and their distance and other thing and based on that everything is being estimated. So, once the water starts moving across the stratification, once the pumping has started now water will come uh, towards the pumping well and more and more of the aquifer begin to get affected by the pumping and this uh, drawdown will start uh, you know developing and can become larger and larger and the drawdown converge on and it starts following the trace of type curve which we have uh, discussed in earlier discussion when we have discussed these uh, superimposition methods graphical methods of superimposition where we have type curve we have discussed. Now, if the advantage with type curves are that you can just use the two graphs having different values and uh, can uh, over uh, superimpose and you get the value. So, one becomes a sort of uh, a type curve, uh, one is type curve another one is to determine the uh, values. So, if uh, the pumping well had been screened throughout the entire thickness of the aquifer. Now, here the situation has slightly changed here. So, we had the water and uh, now the, uh, the entire thickness we do not have the screen. So, the pumping well had been screened throughout the entire thickness of the aquifer if that would have been here in this situation we do not have entire screen throughout the aquifer and the data from both uh, uh, wells would have uh, plotted along the same curve and would have matched the type curve uh, since the beginning. But since we do not have a screen throughout the thickness of the aquifer, so then it is another challenging thing. Now, how to apply all these uh, equations, uh, Thai's equation to unconfined aquifer conditions? So, application of the Thai's equation to unconfined uh, aquifer conditions that with respect to the assumptions which we have discussed earlier uh, associated with the Thai's equation it should be noted certain of uh, them apply specifically to confined conditions. And uh, here we are of course, discussing unconfined aquifer conditions. So, many assumptions which we have discussed are restricted only to confined conditions and therefore, it is important to consider uh, while analyzing data from aquifer uh, that contain water under unconfined conditions here the assumptions have to be taken very carefully. Assumption 3 in our uh, earlier discussion which we have said uh, that uh, this uh, transmissibility is constant 
at all time and at all places. And so here, uh, of course, uh, in nature, uh, even in confined aquifer conditions, transmissibility will not be same uh, in all directions in uh, you know horizontal extent. However, when water is withdrawn uh, or pumping is being done from an unconfined aquifer, the transmissibility decreases as the aquifer is dewatered. And uh, you, we can see here uh, the scenario here that uh, we are having a unconfined aquifer conditions and we are trying to compare with uh, confined aquifer conditions. And uh, the section of both these uh, you know in 3D are shown here uh, for a small drawdown and a large drawdown we are having a situation here. So, uh, it is a unit areas of from both the formations of both the setups are uh, shown in middle. So, uh, we are what we are getting equal volume of water release from storage. So, we are uh, you know equal amount of water is getting out of these two con uh, such scenarios, but we will see further on this how uh, things varies now. So, the results uh, in a greater drawdown in unconfined aquifer conditions as you can also see that the water level here is lower as compared to in a confined whereas, the in confined aquifer conditions the it is relatively above than unconfined condition and uh, uh, which is a both might be having uh, aquifers of equivalent transmissibility. So, they might be having the equivalent uh, or uh, uh, similar transmissibility, but uh, the water level in confined aquifer conditions will remain at higher level compared to in unconfined aquifer conditions. Further, uh, because of the reduction in transmissibility in unconfined aquifers, the drawdown in such aquifers is uh, you know would be greater than the equivalent confined aquifer, because the water level is going down. So, drawdown uh, or the cone of depression would be larger in this case in unconfined aquifer conditions. Now, we can bring that uh, Thais equation here again and then try to understand that uh, how the Jacobs have added uh, you know adjustment or did the adjustment on Thais equation so that it can be applied in other conditions also, which we have also seen. So, this equation now by now we are sort of familiar with this h 0 minus h dash equal to h 0 minus h minus h 0 minus h square upon 2 b. So, b is of course, our saturated thickness of the aquifer before pumping which is there h 0 minus h is the drawdown observed in unconfined aquifer conditions and h 0 minus h dash and dash is important here and here that is the drawdown that would occur if the aquifer we are not dewatered that is the an equivalent confined aquifer conditions. So, by which uh, uh, we can see uh, that uh, how uh, in different scenarios uh, these equations can be applied and uh, whether in confined aquifer conditions or confined aquifer conditions. We have also seen the limitations in the next discussion we will further see about the applications of Thais equations and also limitations etcetera. So, with this I end this discussion. Thank you very much.